Next question, true or false, oral sex is safe sex. <laughs> Everybody agreed it's false. Let's see. what. Are, uh, oh, John Ruscielo got Jesse Roscoe. Sorry. And he also got a fool. <laughs> and he says it's false, but who cares? Uh, Vicky <laughs> says it's false as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the uh, it is false. Oral sex might not cause pregnancy, but sexually transmitted infections can still be transmitted by oral sex. Uh-huh. So there you go. Well there done. You go. <laughs> well done on your uh, trivia. And with that, well, the perfect timing. Look at that. Jason Cha- <clears throat> Chapin is here, ladies and oh, gentlemen. Jason, can, can you hear me? I've entered the conversation uh, at strange times, but that was a very weird time for me to be joining. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, we were just, you know, having a conversation about oral sex. That, that's all. That's all. That's all right. All. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, tell us, when was the last time? No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> we're not doing that. We're not doing that. How are you, sir? Good. Thanks for joining us again. I'm very good. Thanks. How are you? Very good. Thanks. First question, not to be a downer here, but but th- does it get any easier? I mean, it's you know today's the the big day. Do you think about it? Does it is it? Do you focus more on the birthday? Like how do you how do you get through a day like today? Uh, I I tend not to think about it on the anniversary of his death, unless of course I'm doing a show or I'm reading an article where they're celebrating his life and talking about his legacy, or annoying people like me ask you about it. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Good, good answer. Good answer. Um <clears throat> uh so well, but we're here today and Stuart's here. We're uh Stuart, did you move my camera? I'm gonna slap you in the <laughs> face. <laughs> oh yeah, just bring just it a little bit. Just just push it, just push it. Yeah, that's better. Okay. That perfect. Now don't touch All right. it. <laughs> All right. Uh <laughs> we're we're promoting the um the big the big event this weekend this sunday yeah this sunday just wild about harry is that what it's called that's what it's called yeah. and this is how many years now this will be the 21st year overall wow yeah first year new location this year right new location hexer park in huntington which i'm very excited about i always thought it would fit in really well there that of course is where harry lived and it's such a lovely park and you know huntington you know they've made harry one of their own he is like you know just below saint level i think in the town <laughs> yeah right and uh, and uh, it's it's a beautiful park. Yes, it and is. it's a very arts loving town, a very music appreciating town. Sure. So I think we'll get a really really good turnout there. Um, and sorry, J- Jason, what's Jason? What's your involvement uh, with 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 this, if any? I was just looking at the forecast. It's only going to be about eighty five degrees on Sunday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Much cooler. Uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it's it's been great um, getting to know and uh, working with Stu and all the other musicians. Uh, I have it's not it's not anything that I'm doing. I'm just trying to support what they're doing. And so you know I've attended in the past with various family members and uh, helped to promote on a few occasions. And sometimes I give remarks just to give the fans some updates on some projects that they may be interested in. And also I'm there to enjoy the great music. Mm. Good answer. And you'll, um, you'll, uh, are you, you're going to be there this weekend? I will be there. And my sister Jen's going to be performing. I uh, don't know who else in the family is going to be there. We'll probably find out last minute. <laughs> uh, but um also looking forward to getting together with and being there with some friends that I grew up with in Huntington. When did um, when did you uh, flat leave us and move move out of here? <laughs> uh, after college, I lived in Huntington for a couple of years and then moved into the city and then got married and then moved out to Westchester. But um, visited Huntington a fair amount, a uh, bunch of years uh, before my mother moved from Huntington to Westchester, but now she's moved into the city. So everybody's moving around, but Very still like nice. getting out to Huntington and Long Island. You know, back, back a couple of generations ago, it was like you grew up in New York city and moved out to Long Island. Mm-hmm. And now it's, you grew up on Long Island and move up to Westchester. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Um, and, and yeah, and speaking of Westchester, the, um, I have it here somewhere, director of workforce development. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, I work for the Westchester County Association. I spend uh, most of my time 
working with colleges, universities that provide training and job seekers looking for training. And then we work with a bunch of employers to get them jobs when they're done with training. That's that's pretty important stuff right there. Yeah, it's critically important. We focus mostly on the healthcare sector, which is the largest growth sector in the area. And everybody knows about the nursing shortage, but there are a lot of other shortages. And there are a lot of people who understand that uh, careers in healthcare is a pretty smart move. And uh, there are a lot of grants and there are also, um, you know, good jobs, pay well, good benefits, career advancement opportunities. So I feel really good about what I do and how we're helping a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah. Hats off to you. That that's a great, uh, that's a great thing you're doing. And, and it's just for the, the Westchester area or, or are you going to the city? No, we're too? a regional association. So we have uh, members who are in uh, the lower Hudson Valley and New York city and Long Island. Okay. Oh, that's excellent. Do you have any openings at the radio station? <clears throat> <laughs> uh plenty did nothing that pays but <laughs> um it, it, now to tie this into this weekend does your you know i mean who was more charitable who was a more charitable musician than, than your father i i i mean i can think of a few that might be on the same level but but he was definitely one of the the most so what was there an influence there to get in, you know, doing the work that you do? Was was did he kind of spearhead that somehow? Well, I'll take a step back. My I think my father had a bunch of heroes, and Pete Seeger was one of his. And Pete Seeger did benefits, supported so many different organizations over the years. And my father did a bunch of concerts uh, with him around Long Island, uh, the annual concert at Huntington High School. I think Frank was at one of those. Yes, it was. Um, yep, yeah. and. Um, so, you know, he kind of caught the bug early, he realized that he was very fortunate when his career started to come together and take off. And I think he felt, you know, growing up in a very socially active family, that there was an obligation to give back to help lo those less fortunate. So, you know, he did 100 benefit concerts a year wow. and uh, gave away half his money and uh, created, uh, founded a bunch of organizations, including Why Hunger, co-founded with Bill Ayers. And then uh, in 75, 76, he uh, co-founded the Center for Food Action in New Jersey. And then 1980, Long Island Cares. And uh, there were some other organizations he was involved in. So uh, hard to match what he did. But um, because of the, the example he set, there were a lot of other people in the music business that have gotten involved. Sure. Uh, Bruce Springsteen certainly is up there, and he's done a lot to support food banks and food pantries around the country. Billy Joel's done a tremendous amount. Uh, you know, a lot of others have been honored with the Harry Chapin Humanitarian Award for what they've done. Lots of music greats. And then Why Hunger has a, a program called Artists Against Hunger and Poverty. So they recruit uh, artists who are interested in supporting the ending hunger. And so they perform concerts and talk about what can be done and they help raise money. Me on a personal level can't match what my father did, but you know, my philosophy is uh, nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. Mm. <clears throat> I love that. Yeah, I that's great. That. Do you ever like, do you ever feel pressure or, or do people have high expectations because, you know, as Harry's son, do, you know, do people like, expect a lot of you do we all live and breathe yeah. <laughs> uh, you know i i i think i'm smart enough to know that you know anybody who expects me to be uh you know my father i don't know what they're thinking because that's that's not what i'm thinking uh that's not how i was raised i think we were all raised to do what we love doing and you know do the best job we can but you know certainly i didn't pursue a music career but I certainly have supported a lot of things that he was very involved in and other things that he wasn't involved in. And so I'm very comfortable with, with what I'm doing. And I also am very comfortable in supporting all the great things that he did. The, um, well, if this is your chance, if you'd like to sing for us now, go ahead. <laughs> we got two guitars here. Is it anybody's birthday? I'll chime in if we're going to be singing <laughs> <on your> birthday. <laughs> um, and, and and speaking of Springsteen and, and Billy Joel, I know that they're going to be there this weekend, so that's very exciting. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. How do you? How do you? Wish. How how did you get? How did you get the gig for running the whole thing? Which and it must be a lot of work. Uh, it was really easy. It was my idea, so I decided oh, to put okay. myself in charge. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, back in like two thousand one or two, um, I took part to the the Folk Music Society of Huntington did a tribute show for uh, Woody Guthrie, and uh, you know. 
all local folk musicians playing Woody Guthrie's songs. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, a, a fundraiser for um, uh, the Huntington's Disease Foundation. That's what Woody died from. And I said, that was great. And it, was, it got a great response. Everybody loved it. And I said, but why don't we do something for Harry Chapin? He was one of our own here in Huntington. And uh, it took a couple of years to kind of get all the things to fall in place. But um, uh, I was contacted in early 2004 by the... Um, the Civic Association in West Hempstead, next town to where I live. And they said, we've got this park and we'd like to do more with it. And uh, we know you're a musician, you know a lot of musicians, you know, can you organize a concert for us? And I said, well, here's the idea that I've had for a couple of years. They loved it. We <laughs> held it there. We videotaped it. Uh, Judith Wyman, who's been a part of the show for, you know, since the inception, helped out Frank Walker. I think, I think it was Bill Ayers that put me in touch with him. I knew Frank. I didn't know he was the biggest Harry Chapin fan on all of Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, and we kind of organized that on a local level, and we videotaped it. Judith videotaped it, and we made an edit and brought it to the folks at Eisenhower Park and said we'd love to do it here, which was where Harry was supposed to play. Um, so the idea was the local Long Island music community coming together and doing the concert that Harry might have done, and that's uh, that's what we've been doing since wow. since then. And Jason, how did it get to? Um... Jason, how did it get to to you guys? How did you guys find out about it? How did you end up getting involved? Uh, well, I, I can I answer that remember. if you want. Go ahead, Stu. <laughs> um, Jen Jen was doing a house concert in Huntington, a place called the Song Box, um, run by uh, a musician um, named uh, Jane Jane Fallon, I think, um, who you know was a, a songwriter, part of the scene, still is to some degree. Um, so she was doing a house concert and I went to it and said, I've got this idea. Would you be okay with it? What do you think of it? And she gave it her personal stamp of approval. And uh, I sort of decided, okay, that's all I need. <laughs> and it was right. off to the races. But uh, right. yeah, I've been grateful for the, the endorsement of uh, the Chip and family. I think Sandy came to it uh, that year. If not, she came uh, the next year. And uh, Tom came to, to it, actually played in it uh, in oh. Five or 06, maybe 06. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And I'm thrilled that Jen is playing it this year. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's fantastic. Uh and it's all local yeah. musicians, right? Yeah, which which has has been a thing. You know, it's it's right. been, you know, we it you know, we invite people to come in as, as side people from New Jersey or upstate or wherever. Yeah. Uh and all visiting musicians are welcome to come up and sing circle on stage with us at the end. But the right. primary idea for it is Long Island musicians saluting one of our own. Jason, after all these years, do you uh, do people still, you know, people still recognize the name and still, uh, you know, you know, hound you about it or or no? I th I think there is a, a fair amount of recognition. Obviously, if you grew up with the music, you know, you listen to my father, James Taylor, uh, Gordon Lightfoot, you know, all the others. You know, you you enjoyed the music and you probably played the music for your kids and i'm really surprised how often kids end up listening to the same music that their parents grew up mm -hmm. on and now it's actually being passed down to you know the the younger generation so i think that um the the parents or the original fans are the ones who are really the the biggest ambassadors but it's also great when the radio stations you know continue to play the music and and we've been fortunate that there've been a lot of other uh, projects that we've been involved in over the years that have uh, increased awareness of the music and brought it to other um, music lovers who maybe weren't aware of who my father was. And, you know, Cats in the Cradle is the song he's most known for. And and that gets, you know, referenced in a lot of TV shows and movies and commercials mm -hmm. and even video games. And of course, it also gets a lot of mention around Father's Day and uh, my father's birthday. And and then I think another big part of the the whole legacy is the fact that you've got these organizations like Why Hunger, Long Island Cares that have embraced the fact that he was um, one of the founders or the founder, and that um, you know there's a deep history and connection to Long Island. So I'd say his. His core base is certainly Long Island and the metropolitan area, but it's also surprising when I hear about fans in the UK or Australia or Canada. Some of them never went to a concert, um, but, you know, kind of stumbled upon his music and fell in love with it. So it keeps happening in different ways, and it could be more thrilling to know that he's uh, still recognized, still appreciated, still remembered. 
It's 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 interesting to know the the influence your father had worldwide, Jason. Um, we had boy at five years ago, I think it was the 2019 show. Uh, a guy emailed me back in January from Scotland, saying I was in college. Harry played at my college back in I don't know 1972 or something like that, and uh, and I went to see him and I became a fan been a fan ever since and i heard about your show and i'm planning a trip to new york and philadelphia and need to know the date of your show because i want to come to see it that's great that's great yeah that's really great um so uh all right so jason i i don't want to keep you i appreciate the the time uh last time you're here and 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 this time as well um and we look forward to seeing you on saturday and we thank you for uh for coming on um and i'm glad that uh that this is still effective and, and right still do you have any numbers as far as you know how much has been collected through the years or uh loosely putting on the, the spot <laughs> loosely doing the numbers in my head you know, usually i get a letter from paul pactor thank me uh i think over the last 20 years we've collected somewhere around seven or eight tons of food wow which is a drop in the bucket compared to the need but but it ain't nothing absolutely um and uh you know every year depending on the weather we get between Two and three thousand, maybe fifteen hundred and three thousand. Um, That's great uh, attendees, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll match or eclipse that in uh, Huntington this year. Jason, does the family ever talk about like some of the like some of the? Does the family ever talk about some of the weirdos like Frank that just keep bugging the family and hanging around you guys? Or? Uh, Frank is not a weirdo. <laughs> Thank you. Frank, Thank Frank, you. Frank I is agree. a good friend. And, I call uh, Frank lovably and, exec- eccentric. <laughs> and and Frank's got a lot of passion and a lot of talent. So it's an honor to, to be connected with him. And uh, you, you before too. we go, I want to give two quick plugs. And and Frank and uh, Stu were part of the, the film we made back in 2020, Harry Chapin Went and Out Do Something, a documentary that is about his life and his uh, music and humanitarian legacy. And we're going to be re-releasing that later this year when we release a new documentary on the 50th anniversary of Cats in the Cradle. And for anybody who doesn't know, not only was it my father's only number one song, but it was co-written with my mother. Oh, and yep, I knew that. December marks the 50th anniversary when it reached number one. So uh, we've, we've put together a great film with interviews from a lot of music legends and family members and band members. And we also include a bunch of reaction videos. And it's it's Mm -hmm. hysterical when people have never heard the song or listening to it for the first time and giving their their immediate reaction to it. And Mm -hmm. a lot of them uh, have no idea who my father was. They intro him by saying, this is a song by Harry Chaplin. (laughs) (laughs) I've heard Chapman too. (laughs) That's what autocorrect always does to me when I'm entering it on my phone. Unbelievable. Uh, that's great. Well, we, yeah, we look forward to that. And um, yeah, that's great. Looking, uh, looking forward to that. Um, and uh, looking forward to Sunday. Uh, again, Jason Chapman, th- Ch- Jason <laughs> Chapman, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. Great being with you. Look All right. We'll see you again. See you Sunday. All right. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. in the cradle and a silver spoon little boy blue and the man in the moon when you're coming home dad i don't know when but we'll get together then you know we'll have a good time then and the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon little boy blue and the man in the moon when you're coming home son i don't know when but we'll get together then dad you know we'll have a good time then Calling up just the other day
it's your nice talking to you, yeah. It's been your nice talking to you. And as we hung up the phone, it occurred to me, he grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. Everybody lives never together. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you're coming home, son, I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. Very nice. Stuart Marcus, Paul Esposito, Woo! Frank Walker, Diane Fogarty. Tony Walker. Hey! Woo! Harry Chapin. Harry Chapin. <laughs> special thanks to Jason Chapin. Uh, why do I keep saying that? Jason Chapin. <laughs> special thanks head. to him. I, I know, it's crazy. <laughs>